There's one thing about that song, I simply cannot get enough of it. I certainly love its impact, the lyrics, what it speaks to. Because in this hour that we are in, that if we are going to accomplish what your commands us to do, it can only be done by revelation. Because we have so many teachings that are so distorted. And one of the main elements, it doesn't deal with the teachings today. It is the ovon, the sin. The vile, most blatant, wicked actions against the commonwealth of Yisra'ya. The sins are egregious before Almighty Yah. And there is no concept in the minds of those that perform those acts and activities that there is no yare, no trembling at his judgment, no trembling of any fear that he is the master of all things and he had created all things. There is nothing that exists of itself there has not been an evolution of uh, a microscopic amoeba that has constituted the intelligence of the design of creation that Yah has created. And so this mind that was created out of the dungeons of darkness and hell was a mind that Yah gave it over unto every kind of depravity, every kind of vile, sadistic imaginations and creations of things that are beyond the comprehension of man to think on. It was a mind that was absent of the Torah or the discipline or the mandates, the commands of Yah. It was a mind that began to troll, to begin to observe its own inner concepts that were based upon a devious idea to sin above Yah. And that is the nature of the mind of man. That Yah is not correct. He gave us a Torah Yisrael. It needed no amendments to it at all. It needed no correction at all. It needed no interpretation at all, Yisrael. And so today you have a plethora of books and material from minds that are so demented and corrupt having no wisdom of the Chukmah, the wise counsel of Yah. And everyone today has become a master. That's why Yah gave one of the tribes of Yisrael the jurisdiction, the mandate of the counsel of the Torah. And that was Levi Umma, the tribe of Levi. No one else. He did not give any outside interpretation. That is why Korah and Nathan and Abaram, when they withstood the messenger of Yah, Yah knew that that mind would corrupt a mind that was already corrupt. It would cause them to do things that were so devious and wicked that even the Most High did not even want a writ, a writing of that example for us this day. And so Yah immediately, uh, he dispelled them from the camp of Yisrael. And he took their tithe 
the old, the young, the blind and the cripple, he opened up the lats, the secrets of hell. And they all went down into the depths of darkness, wailing, gnashing of teeth, to give us, Yisra'ah, a tasnith, a pattern, an example, the protocol of this mind. This mind cannot look up unto Yah. The very insignia of this beast and man's mind, it will not honor Yah, it will not look up to Yah. It is a mind that is so devious. We as Yisra'ya, if we do not guard our minds from it. How do we do that? What is the process? Daiweed said, oh yeah. I embrace. I berach. I told you ya. For your afflictions. Your only. For in those afflictions. It caused my mind to learn your hukha, your statutes, your measures, your truth. I had no other place to find comfort but in the ordinance of all Maria. And even through this yom, this day, this hour. Yisra'ya has not understood the significance, the value, and the importance of their, on the, their afflictions. Them perceiving that they are deprived of certain things and we are not. For the earth and the fullness thereof belongs to Yah, the carol upon a thousand hills. What do we feed him today if he's hungry? He delights in the praises, the shimcha of Yisra'ya and the voice of Torah, the mark, the insignia of this mind. Yisra'ya, I want to lay down a simple pattern today. And unless our sadiq our righteousness exceed that of those of this pharisaic mindset. And it is our own mind of its own diabolical attempt to sway our judgment according to our emotions, uh, our infatuations, uh, instead of according to the Torah of wisdom. And if we allow the content of that deceived, diabolical mind to take precedent over Yah, we're going to fall into the derisions of darkness. And we will not see and nor can we comprehend or receive the love of Torah. And because we do not receive the love of the Torah, Yah then will... Grant unto us, he will ascribe nothing to pour out upon us strong delusions that we may believe the lie, the lie of our own conscience. For what reason? That he may damn us all into the darkness of hell. He is not playing with this most damnable wicked generation. He is not going to coddle us, Yisrael. We do not even embrace his Hamashiach, Yeshua. This mind is diabolical. There's a mind that is built upon the concepts and the principles of Yah. Whereby there were three men that were Sadiq. They were justified by the judication of the Torah of Almighty Yah. There was no sin until the Torah came. And so there are things, six are things that Yah despises, 
And when you see the combination of the seventh, you find that that mind has been doctrinated or indoctrinated by the mother of all holotry. But this religious whore, and there's a mark upon those Yisra'ya. I don't want to go into that direction today, but I shall. You understand? I shall. If I die teaching this, I die. Hallelujah. There are three individuals that Yah marks for us to mark. Yah says for us to us or mark. A Tommy, a man that is perfect in his order toward Yah, in the concepts of Yah, in the Torah of Yah, he said, you mark the perfect man's steps, his order, his way of life. He said, for the end of that man is shalom. And there is no shalom outside of the Torah, the works of the mitzvah, because we know that we are pleasing Yah, and because he has chafetz, great pleasure in our actions, then he grants unto us, Yah grants by his foreknowledge, the very desires of Yisra'ya, the love of Yisra'ya, because we have one love, and that's the love, the mind, the heart of Yahshua HaMashiach. I want to identify these three before I proceed today in the book of Yeskan. We greet you all, you that have joined us from afar. We received a call this morning from an Ak from the islands of the Caribbean. He was here in the United States. He thought that Durham was right here near us. And when I said it is at least three hours minimum, and that is driving at a torrid pace he was disquieted because of that and an act from britain called us this morning for prayer and also our precious ach david and his isha susie anya there in britain and our precious ach and friend there in Bergshead, scotland david nesha his Isha, and the children, we greet you all, for we know that those are individuals and homes from a great distance that join us today on this Shabbat. So we greet you here from Teshua community, our friends. May the riches of your rest upon you and all of you that have joined us in Yahshua's mighty name. I want us to be captivated by the very Intense integrity of these men in yes scale Ezekiel chapter 14 and verse 14, three verses here. And Yah speaks of a time of a tremendous indignation, his weaponry, his za'am, his indignation, the terror of his anger poured out upon the nations of the earth for the preparation of the king, of the one that shall come to establish a kingdom that has been erected from the tunnels and the dark secretive chambers of darkness of hell. And so there must be a cataclysmic mayhem of the destruction of the powers and the nations and we can see that already in the process. The catalyst of that is one thing. It is the love of money. And they have opened their doors to every kind of vile, evil, sadistic thing. So he gives us the identity of the mark of Sadiq. And it is not by some mark or some visible sign in one's forehead. It is the ruach of the matter. He says here in verse 14, he said, in the midst of all of that calamity, though these three men, and we know that the name Noach is simply to rest, or the rest in Almighty Yah. He gives us the identity of Daniel Yah. Daniel Yah. The one who declares that Almighty Yah is my 
judge. He is my Shafat. He is the one that judges me. He is the one that corrects me. Unless we rest in the power of Yah, in Yahshua, unless we stand before the Mishchach, Chesed, or the throne of judgment in every second of our lives, uh, then woe unto us, Yisra'ya. There must be a continuous purging, uh, a refining of Yisra'ya. And he said, and if Ehob, the one that hated the very vileness of his sons and his daughters, uh, the one that hated the approach of sin, his name uh, implies Sonny hated. If these three men uh, were in this day or that time, they should only get Allah, they should only deliver their own nefesh by their own sadiq. They should only deliver them by their own righteousness, Yisra'ya. And this is declared by the mouth of the Sovereign's One, Almighty Yahweh. This was not declared by Yeskazle. It was not declared by the Melach. It was declared by the mouth of Yah. Yah says, if I send the noisome or rather evil beast, if I send the power of the behemoth or the high, the one of strength and life, and it pass through the land, and they spoil, they plunder, they destroy, they uproot the land, so that the land, it has become shima, it is desolate, it has no life, it has no substance of life, you cannot even draw life from it. If the land is desolate, that no man pass through because of the vile, evil mindset of this beast. It is one thing that we can rest assuredly in Yisrael. For the mark of this beast and man, it is designated by Yah. He has created all things and I will give us comfort in this teaching to know that he has it all under control. And he goes on to say in verse 16, in the midst of all of that great calamity and agony, though these three men were in it, and Yah says, as I have life, as I live, says Yah, they shall, there is no possibility, they shall, Nasal. They shall only preserve, they shall only deliver. They shall only capture their own. They shall never deliver son, neither daughter, but only shall that one be delivered. But the land shall be shimama. It shall be desolate. It shall be destroyed. We're living in a season. But the land is desolate. There is no knowledge of Almighty Yahweh. You cannot have peri of fruit without the revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach. Everyone is going about in its own and their own ways and establishing uh, their way. Their own vile, corrupt, what they call righteousness. And everything that they do, it seems right to them. For all the ways of a man, they're right in his own eyes, his own eye and diluted uh, spiritual knowledge. But the end of that man is destruction. They destroy everything they touch. There's no life in them. There is no pulsating power of love for Torah. They don't even know how to love their children. And they frankly do not give a damn about their issue. If a man says he loves young, and the pillars upon whereby the power of his great Ahava is predicated upon, it is loving him with all that we possess. And then loving Yisra'ya Ari'ach as we love ourselves. So these men have not the Ru'ach of Yah. 
And if they have not the ruach of Yah, then they have the spirit of one of the most vilest, deceitful constitutions of darkness that can be constituted in the bosom of man and began to grow, excel, and then began to produce a legitimacy to their actions, a legitimacy to their doctrine, as they perceive that they are drawing others to their bosom. And many that pursue the way of Hashotan, for the way is filled with many, but the way haderech of Yah, they feel that irren to the way of Yah. Because it is the way that restrains us. And in that restraining, it refines us. And as it refines us, uh, it shows us the vileness of our own conscience, mind, will, way. That are diametrically opposed to Yah, that we speak out in our actions against him is the sure sign and the signalness of the mark of the mind of man. I want to give us an example before I show you the legitimacy or the reason why it must be in the Mishach and also in the right hand. I must do that, Yisraya. I want you to turn to Daniel Yael. Hallelujah. I want us to understand the mark of this mind. And the bara, the creation of this mind. As to how this mindset comes about. We must understand that. And in order for us to do that, we must search the writings of the Navi'im, the prophets. We must search the counsel of the Torah. You cannot understand that, Yisrael. You cannot understand that unless you understand the writings of the Torah and the witness of that by the volume of speech and writings of the prophets of Yah. You cannot. And there is uh, an explicit pronunciation. Uh, the order of this mind, the strength of it, uh, and the most powerful thing that it denounces. Daniel chapter 4, verse 4. The one that declares himself as Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, he says, I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest. He was at his shila. He was resting in the comfort of his uh, great power, his esteem, his strength. And that's what we as a nation do. We tend to rest upon our laurels, to think that we are mighty. We rest upon that. So he was at ease. And the council of Yah had no significant power. A revelation in his life, and that is what it is uh, in that mind. And we will see as we proceed, Yisrael. He said, I was rusted in my bed, in my house. And he said, I was flourishing in my palace, in my place of opulent beauty and extreme magnificent uh, uh, honor in the midst of that. He said, rest among that, of my excellent, my strength, what I had created. Uh, and that's the mind. We don't see the creation of Yah. We are all flush, Yisrael. Ramad is trying to take Yah's Torah and create a word that is not there. He did not give us a Torah. That was difficult to understand. He made it simple. This is the way of a common man. It's a simple salvation. Israel were the most common people upon the face of the earth. Their birthright was in Almighty Yahweh. You understand, they had no land. And he granted unto them a nation, an ummah, a nation of tribes. That we would present the excellence of Yah's light. 
in a mind that was marked by the powers of hell. And he elected a people uh, to allow his excellence to shine in the old land whereby darkness uh, had overtaken it. Uh, and it was not until the power of your show was revealed that left there be light. And there was light. He is the light of the Torah. He is the substance of Torah. Because he is Torah Yisrael. Nebuchadnezzar said, I, I had this helen in verse 5, this dream. He said, in this helen, he said, I was taking a wash. I was frightened. I was terrified. He said, and I began to ponder upon my sleeping quarters, my bed. He said, and in this helen, this vision in my head, he says, it began to be hell. It began to frighten me. I became extremely frightened. That the flourishing of my heart, my palms began to sweat because I knew that this was beyond my ability to comprehend. I knew that this was not of some natural order, that through my power and my self diligence, uh, that I can overthrow this and overtake it. Uh, he said, This frightened me because Nebuchadnezzar, he was not afraid of the kingdom powers uh, because he was the kingdom. His power was the excellent power. But this, what I see, presents an opposition that is greater than my power. And so he began to tremble. He began to fear. And the first thing that he did, as all leaders do today, especially in this nation, therefore he began to make this decree and he began to call all the hachim, all the wise men. That's what our illustrious President Barack Hussein Obama does. He called men like T.D. Snake. He called men like this faggot bastard of a dog here in Atlanta. This Bishop Eddie, the long watcher dog. He called men like this grinning opossum there in Houston, Texas. This deceitful liar and a devil, the Osteen, the stain of death, darkness, and hell. And he began to call all his hakim, all those that were wise in the prognostication of religious infatuation. That's what they do. If there's something that arises just like this adulterous beast of a bastard, Clinton, he began to call all of his hakim, the wise men. He called the Billy Graham. He called these men to give him counsel. He called the T.D. Jakes. This is what they do, Yisrael. These are the hakim today. These are the wise men. These are religious people. Pronosticated. So he began to call all the wise men of Babel before men. We know that these men are of the world because they live lifestyles that are opulent. They live richer than kings. He's not going to call a man like the man that went before Dawid, Nathan. They're not going to call a nobi like Shemuel and say, woe unto this nation. For her mandate is of the mind of the beast. And her desire is the will and the mark of man. For no man in his own self-righteousness can please Yah. And it is one thing about the nature of the beast. Uh, it is a living power that desires to obstruct, to destroy, and to bring down the pillars of Yah's foundation of truth. And they began to disband the order of the mitzvah to destroy Torah. You don't have to regard the Shabbat. He has no name. You can have your black God, your white God, your Jew God, your Asian God, you name him, and we will carry the same name, but he is the God to you. 
And yet they create their images in their stadiums, uh, in their events and activities of God worship, in their Roma, Roman uh, colossals of color sins. That the minds and the hearts of the people are given over unto the unclean uh, representation of a panther and unclean beast, uh, of an eagle and unclean clean beasts of the bulldogs and unclean beasts and they don't realize that they are given credence unto the spirit of the damn unclean thing that's the truth Yisrael is just the truth we cannot deny it what we should do is denounce it so he called for the wise counsels he called for T.D. Jakes he called for Billy Hen. He called for Orr Roberts. He called for Pat Roberts. And what these men do, they consult with the dead. They retrieve the memorials or the memories of the things that Orr Roberts taught when he went before the president. And even as Billy Graham, that he, he has counseled all of them. So they draw back on historical events. And then they began to look at the counsel that Graham and these children of hell, who they are. They counsel out of the mind of the beast and man. It's not the mind of Yah. You can only counsel out of the mind of Yah according to the commandments of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. He says, so he called for all of the wise men, the Hakim of Bevel, Come before me. Do not the presidents and the leaders do that? Say, come before me. And they call for the wise men. It is pronounced as a decree on the news uh, that uh, President Clinton, uh, he met with all of the wise council of the religious orders. The thing that he is going through. So he called all these wise men. They will not say and cry out and lift up their eyes Unto Hashem and say, Ya, send the Nabi, the prophet. Send the messenger. Let me hear his voice. If it's through the airways, send his voice in the heavens above. That I may call that man. For he will speak with integrity and honesty. Hallelujah. He wanted to make known the interpretation of the Chilim. So there came unto him... Uh, the Hatom or the magicians, those that understood the astrology and the, and the different events of, uh, of the heavens of Yah, the placings of the stars and all of that. And you will be surprised. Some of the most vilest religious uh, concepts that these men possess today, where the originality of that has come from. It has not come from the discipline of the Torah because they deny the Torah. They deny the mitzvah of Yah. That is one of the surest signs of that mind. It denies the principles of Omar Yah. And you can see that uh, the Mesach is the brow. It is this part of a man. Uh, the mark shall be in the brow. And you can tell when someone squints their brows. Uh, you can tell the actions of their mind, the attitude of their mind. You can look at people and tell when they just between their brows, Yisra'ya. You can see anger, you can see hatred, you can see all that between the, the Mesach, the brow of man, you can. The discontent, the dissatisfaction with you, you can see that. So he called all these great men, the, the, ha, uh, the Hakum, uh, the magicians, uh, and he also called the astrologers, uh, the Ashach, those that had the ability to, to inquire and to enchant just like uh, he called the enchanters and those that encounter and drew upon uh, the spirits of darkness, uh, just like Billy Hinn uh, would always say how he would talk to Catherine Kuman. And these men talk with the dead. The mind of Hashatan, it is a dead mind. You know why it's a dead mind? Because it is a mind that trespasses uh, the Torah of Yah. For we know sin is the trespassing uh, of the Torah. We were once dead. We were all Israel dead and in trespasses uh, of sin. And so these leaders will not call upon the mind of life. 
They will not inquire the counsel of Yah. So they call their astrologers and those that can enchant the necromancers to speak unto them. And he says, I want you also of the Chaldeans or of the Casti, a people of tremendous uh, secretive orders uh, of every kind of vile order of religious conjuring of spirits. He said, I also want you to call the Geza or the soothsayers. Uh, those are the ones that determine. They can take all the signs and determine what is relevant and what is irrelevant. Call them. And I told the dream before them, but he declared because that was a spiritual dream. It was from, yeah, that healing, that vision was from, yeah, that's what these men cannot interpret Gilyana. They cannot interpret the visions of the Nobi because they're from Yah. They're wise in their own counsel of conceit. And they think they're wise. And there is nothing that is coming from Yah to their bosom, Yisraya. And they did not Yada know me the interpretation of that dream. He said they had no power. And these were the wisest of men. They understood signs. They understood events. They understood all those things. They understood the very pattern of the sky. Yet there was something that was beyond their reach, Yisraya. And this mark of the beast and man, it is beyond the comprehension of this religious whore. And this religious horror. And if you literally think you're going to get a knowledge of that from this vile whore, you are deceived. That's why we must eradicate our minds of her teachings. And I will show you why as we proceed. They could not tell me they had no power. He said, but at last when I come to any kind of senses, he said, there was one by the name of Donia, Daniela, came in before me, whom Neymar had given Beth Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, because he had a strength that the other men did not have. So even Nebu gave him a name to represent the power of his God. And you must understand that Daniel Ya'el, he lasted through the entire Babel kingdom. Until the, the fall of that kingdom, he was in power. It is one thing that Yisra'ah is going to be in power once the kingdom is dissolved. It is one thing that you're sure is going to stand and he's going to take the power of Yah until the kingdoms of the earth come down. This mind, this vile mind must come down. This mind must be exposed. This mind must be made known unto Yisrael. He said, in this man, in Daniel Yam, he said, I knew in whom, in whom the Ruach of the Chadosh Mighty One. He said, I knew he had the Ruach of Yah. He had one strength and power that was greater than Belteshazzar, the name of my God. And I knew that in this man was the power of the Most High, Almighty Yah, that created all things, the strength of the Most High. He said, I knew that. Why? Because only those that have the strength, the testimony of Yahshua, can interpret the dreams or the visions of Almighty Yah. The Helim of Yah, it is the mind of Yah speaking to Yisra'ah. And without the Ruach of Yah, you cannot interpret the dreams of Yah. You can interpret them uh, in a pattern. And I find that among many of the religious sects today uh, that is appeasing to man. You will find that the interpretation of this dream. Uh, I have never heard one of these individuals uh, 
that interpret a dream whereby there was a warning, a woe, whereby the indignation of Yah was going to be poured out upon them. I've never. In all of my life as a young ignorant man, I've never seen it. Even to this day, if someone gives what a dream, there is always this rosy conclusion to the dream. It's always a rosy conclusion. I don't give a damn how their lives are, their lifestyles. I have never seen one. I will watch these men meticulously and see how they will utter the vile lies from the inner chambers of the mind of hell that was against Yah. I've never heard one to say, my friend, Wong. For Yah says, death shall come upon you. You have been vile. You have been impugnant. You have denounced the power of his throne. That he is in control of all matters upon the earth. And you shall be brought down to the side of hell. For this is the command of Yah. I've never seen that. Listen, Yisrael, verse 9. Obel Shazah, he called him a Aras, a master. He called him one that had the ability to be strong and firm. And he knew that he would speak to him with truth, with a strong disposition. He will be firm in the revelation of the matter. So he called him a master. He called him a, an aras. O master of the magicians. He said, I know that you are above them. Because I know. Is this not what he says? Ayara that the ruach of the kadosh mighty one is in you. I know that Yah's power is in you. He said, I know that the spirit of Yah is in you. And he said, there is no lapse, no secret, no thing of mystery, no dark saying or speech, nothing. Uh, he said, no secrets trouble you at all. For there is nothing that confronts you. That the spirit of the Ruach of the Mighty One in you, uh, you're not able to interpret, to reveal to bring forth the essence of it, to bring forth the knowledge of that matter. He said, there is nothing that causes you uh, to, to fall, to plunder. He said, there's nothing because I know you have the Ruach of Yah in you. Without the Ruach of Yahshua in us, Yisrael, Yah, we're going to fall away. We're going to be seduced. Uh, unless, Yisrael, Yah, if it's not by the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach, then the very elect of Yah is going to be deceived. We cannot have the mind of man. The mind of man always rises up in his own excellence. The mind of man, the mark of a man's mind always rises up. That's why among us we rise up against each other. The wife against the husband. The husband against the wife. The children are against the mother. The mother against the children. The father against the son. The son against the father. You're sure said it would be that way. He said in a time of great desolation that a man's foe shall be of his own house. A man's foe shall, his enemy shall be of his own house, Yisraeli. He said, tell the vision of my dream that I've seen in the interpretation thereof. He says unto Daniel, yeah, I want you to reveal unto me the interpretation and he expounded upon the dream unto him. Moving down to verse 13 for expedience. He says, uh, this was this mighty dream upon my bed, this vision. He said, I saw in the vision of my head. Where did it be gotten? In his head. It is mine. This is what the enemy wants to captivate and there's a reason. And we're going to understand why the mark is in the forehead. He said it began in my head. It did not begin in the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. It all of our iniquity began in our head. All of our foul disposition, it begins in the head, in the rush. 
And the rush is the summit, the pinnacle of power. Is the ruling authority of man. He said, it began here in my head. But he felt it in his heart lately because he was frightened. Oh, you get afraid here. But the blood began to flow from here. And because this signal that the heart begins to beat, doesn't it? And the hands become sweaty and they began to perspire. So he said, isn't that amazing now? It begins here and you sense it here for the mark shall be here. And in specifically, the right hand. Why that hand? We need true messengers to search out the Torah for us and to explain things. But because you're my friends, I will explain it and show you the preponderance of Chatzve scriptures that you will know why. And there will be no doubt when I finish. I'm not going to rush because there are hundreds of scripture. He said, it began upon my head and my head upon my bed. He said, and I perceive and behold, my eyes were open. And he says, I saw this ear, this watcher, this melach. I saw a melach. And a Hadash one, one that the brilliancy and the beauty of that one, it was not like the other dreams I've had. It was not like those dreams whereby the magicians and the astrologers, the necromancers could interpret. He said, this one looked different. There was a brightness of his excellence. That was the beauty and a power that frightened me. I knew that of my God, Belshazzar, Belshazzar, that my God, that those, uh, my spirit was united with them. Uh, and there was no fear when they came. No whatsoever. He said, but this one I knew that he was different. He was of the Kadosh one. And he came down from Hashemayim. He came down from the heavens. And he cried, Kara aloud. And he said this. Bring it down. Hew. Down the Erech, the tree, the most powerful nation, hew it down, the empire of great strength. And that is what the Erech represent, the tree, always represent a people, a nation that is of great strength, of great power. Yah says, hew it down, bring it down, cut it down. He said, and cut off the branches. We are the branches of Yah in Yeshua, Hamashiach. And it is the mind of that wicked, sinful nature, the mark of man that cuts us off. He said, cut off the branches. He says, shake off his leaves and scatter his fruit. He said, let the beast, the chai, the bohemian. He said, let the beast get away from under it that's why as i spoke unto us that they're going to look at hashatan and say uh, is this the man that did cause the kingdoms to shake you are the one and we have been associated with you you're the beast he said let the beast get from under it and for the fowls from his branches. Verse 15. He said nevertheless I want you to leave the ikha. That's important. I want you to leave the stump. Of its roots in the earth. And we are experiencing the roots of Babel today. And that's why the kingdom of that power has never been rooted out. Yah commanded that did he not. He said I want you to leave the ikha. The root. The roots of it. The, subs, the stumps. Why? Because Yah is in control uh, of this plan. It is being mandated and carried out uh, by the commands of Almighty Yahweh. And we will see as we go farther. He said, I want you to leave the stump to the root of the earth. Uh, he said, even a bat of iron and brass in the tender grass of the fields. And let it be wet and the dew upon the heavens uh, and let his portion 
be with the beast in the grass of the earth. He said, I want you to leave the residue of his kingdom. And I want him to understand the power of my strength. He said, I want him to be like the beast upon the earth. And that's the nature of that mind. It operates like a beast. It doesn't give a damn. The lion doesn't love the willow beast. I watch the cats around here. They don't give a damn about the squirrels. They hunt them viciously. They hunt them. They hunt them with a proudness. And they don't give a damn. And that is what the mind of the wicked one does. It hunts out the feeble and the weak one. He also let it become like a beast. Let there be no sensitivity. This is a nation that doesn't give a damn. It has no sensitivity of mankind and humankind. It is a mind that is pervasive in this land. And I will call it, I'm not going to stop. It is called the damn white mind. And it transcends, transcends every ethnicity of people. It doesn't give a damn. And that's the truth, Yisraya. It transcends nationalities and races of people, boundaries and borders. It's a mind of greed and selfishness. It's a mind that doesn't give a damn. It doesn't care. It has no, it has no sympathy for mankind. It is greedy. It is lustful. It destroys. It, it, it rapes and plunder and pillage. That's the truth. That's that mind. It is the mind that has been birthed out of the gates of hell. There is no white man. So don't be foolish, all right? You're not white. There is no black man. You're not black. There is no such thing as a Jew man, all right? All of this terminology has been made up, okay? Stop it. I'm not afraid to say that. If the white man got a problem, he has the mind of how short time. If the black man got a problem, he has the mind of the enemy. If the Jew man got a problem, they have the mind of Hashatan. We defend Torah. We don't defend some damn disposition or some prescribed connotation of who we are. You are either Yisraya or you are a damn filthy, dirty Gentile. That's it. You are either Yisraya, the elect, the Bahir, those that have been birthed through the promise, the Daba of Yah, or you are a damn. Gentile, you are a Goen. You are the heathen nations. You are damn heathen. I don't give a damn who you are. That's it. I say boldly, frankly, and I will not bite my tongue in fear. I'm a man that those that thought that they had a leverage of strength and beauty. The best of them have turned away from me, so I don't give a damn. I will not go down as a weak, cowardly man of a beggarly spirit. If I go down by myself, I'll go down by myself. You understand? But I will not cow down and speak things that will satisfy some damn dirty white flesh, some damn polluted black flesh. Some damn corrupt, vile, ignorant Jew flesh. I will not do that. I want to impose something here. I'll continue. When that man saw him this morning, immediately, when he saw the color of his skin, that his skin was black as tar, when he saw that, he calls me and tells me, I'm coming from Columbia. I just moved down from Philly. And this was the catalyst here. I sat under Jacob O'Myers. I say, uh, you, know, you know the first thing that came out of my mouth, don't you? Have you listened to me, my friend? Have you listened to the teachings from this work here of Yah? No, I have not. Well, I knew what it was then. And when he saw the glistering blackness of this man, his skin dark, and a dark hue nearly the color of black. When he saw that, 
That was the catalyst. And I knew he wasn't coming in. I'm not offended because of this dog of hell. And that is what that man has done to the people because those kinds of men, they teach lies as in the subtlety of the teaching, uh, the supremacy of what they call the white man. And so even the men of the diaspora has uh, no authority in that gathering up there. They're relegated to a zakhin. But to elevate them to the office of a nobi or prophet, they will not do that. You understand? And so I knew that. Because when he came in here, he was going to have to settle down on the a true one that is of the lineage of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakob. I'm not surprised. Not at all. Don't tell me color doesn't matter. You are damn liars. It does to the vast majority of this nation. And there are those that call themselves white, still got problems. And you that call yourself black, you still got problems. You better get the damn mess out of you. I am of the lineage of Abraham. That speaks for itself. My promises are in Yudshach and Yaakob. For the promises are in Yudshach and fulfilled. And Ya'akhob. So that is my lineage. You can trace it back from that man. Okay? Hallelujah. I won't back down my ark for this wicked generation. Again, he says in verse 15, Nevertheless, leave a, uh, a stump and ikka of his roots in the earth, even with the band of iron and brass. All of this is vital here. I just don't have the time to teach it all, but I will, I will point out some of this. The purpose of the brass, what it means, and all of the, he said, the tender grass of the field. He said, let it be wet with the dew of the heavens, and let his portion, who is the his? The one that uh, is revealing the dream, or the one that is the dreamer? He said, let his portion be with the beasts uh, in the grass of the earth. He says, verse 16, Hear ye Sarah Yashimach. Yah says, Lord, his love, the Shaul, as he speak unto Philippi, does he say let? Does he say let? The same heart that was in Yoshua HaMashiach. Does he say that, Yisra'ya, or? And that is to permit. Does he say that? He says that, Yeshua. Hallelujah. It says that, Yah said, let his love let his love, let his mind, his conscience, his thoughts, his will, uh, hallelujah. Allow that, Yah says, let his mind and all of that, let it be changed from minds. Let even the mind of that individual be changed from the mind of a man. Well, what is a mind? Let his mind, his love be changed from that of a man's. What is a man? A man must have the ruach, the breath of Yah in him. And when he made man, he breathed into him and he became a living nefesh. He became a living nefesh. He became the life of Yah. He became the breath of Yah. He is the life of Yah. He is the expression of Yah. That's what he made. And out of that mind, uh, the subtlety of darkness uh, and the mark of this bohemant uh, spirit against Yah, we saw in Adam, uh, we saw what transpired or what transitioned through him, Yisrael. We saw that, did we not? We saw the mind that was corrupt. Through him, that Habel and Kayan, Kayan rose up and killed his ark, and there was a mark and Uth, and Uth a son. He was a prodigy. There was a mark put upon him, and Yah says, "No one touch him. You touch him, then woe unto you. He's left for me. Yah is going to hunt his zir out." of the earth and they're going to be found Yisra'ya. 
That's why we better allow our hearts to be captivated with truth. Damn your natural heritage. It doesn't mean a damn thing. We are the heritage of Almighty Yah. That's our heritage in Yeshua HaMashiach. Our heritage is twisted as the darkness of hell. Look at them. And that is the truth. He said, let his love, his mind, his conscience be changed from man's and let a beast's heart be given him. Is this the message of the dreamer? Had expected in the his convoluted arrogance and his pride. Yah said, Take out the heart of man. It was not the man that sinned. It was not the man that was caught in transgression, Yisraya. It's either the book is the truth or it is a lie. But it was the woman. And man knowing that she is just like this, simply that is the woman, is the weaker vessel. And Yah knows that we are weak, so he deals with us uh, according to his revelation and the power of his knowledge. Uh, and so he must spoon, uh, spoon feed us at times uh, that we may get a little fatness on our bones. We may gain a little weight. We may get a little strong. You don't go and set a stake before that little child, that tav. Uh, you grind it up. And then you began to give him a little solid food. You began to see the differences in his body, his shape, his strength. You began to smell what comes out of him. It doesn't smell like the milk stuff now. It's getting raw and real, real funky. And so it's a progressive thing the way Yah guides us. He knows that we cannot eat this kind of meat. You will be overcome with it. Yeah. It's almost someone getting up from this. I can't handle that. I, I, I can't. I, my mind. My mind is about to burst. Come on, Yisra, yeah. That's why there are many things I haven't taught here, but I will teach as we grow and mature. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yah says, uh, listen now, and let the beast love be given him, uh, and let it must pass seven times. There are six things that Yah hates. And seven is an abomination. And once it proceeds to that level, that mind is perfected in that one. I will show you as we proceed in the mark of the relevance of the number six, the number six, and the number six. Yah says, let it be seven times that there is a complete denigration. He has degenerated down to the sub-levels of darkness. That there is no way that the mind can be lifted up unless I lift it up to show you my power. Can I show us that, Israel? Let me move on. Verse 17. This matter is by the decree of the watcher, of the melach of Yah, the ear, the watcher. And the demand of the shalala, of the jurisdiction and the decision and the power of that matter... He said, by the word of the Chadosh one. And Yah said, this has not come by my mandate or my interpretation. But Yah has dispatched a messenger with the coals of his fire on his lips to bring revelation and understanding. To the intent that the living, to the intent, for what purpose? He's talking about Yah's intention. Hear this carefully. To the intent. That the living, are we living in Yeshua? Yes. Do we have the life of Yeshua? Yes. He said, this is what the watcher, watcher, the ear said, to the intent that the living, that the living may yada, may know, may understand by this experience that the most high, that Yahweh, that Yah, that the supreme one rules. Do you hear that? That he rules in the kingdom of men. You hear that, Yisraya? It is your the rules in the kingdom of man. And look at this, the arrogance, the boastfulness of, of this uh, watchman, watchman of Yah. And he gives it to whomsoever he will. 
and he set up over it the lowest of men. You may think they are great and powerful. This is our strength that, yeah, he rules in the kingdom of man. And he gives it to whomsoever he will. Well, who has he given the kingdom? He said he gives it to the lowest of men. Did he not say that? Does it say that, that the lowest, the creeping thing, the vile thing? I will show you, hold that and turn quickly. Don't lose your marking there, but turn quickly to Eob, Job chapter 9 and verse 24. I will show you the lowest of men. I will show you in two places. Did not, Yah says, uh, did not the watchers uh, of the ear, the Melach of Yah say, uh, that Yah want us as the living to Yah not to understand that the Most High, that he rules in the kingdom of man, uh, that he is the Tsar, he is the supreme power, that his word uh, is excellent above all men words, uh, and say, even in the mind of the power of darkness, uh, that the mind of Yah shall prevail. And he is the one that sets up, right? That the Most High rules in the kingdom of men. And he gives it to whomsoever or who he will. Uh, he will and he sets up over the kingdom the lowest, the most despicable of men. Well, who are those men? Eob tells us here in Job 9.24. These are the men for the earth, for the Olam is given into the hand of the Rasha, the wicked. Who are the wicked? Job 9.24. Who are the wicked? The wicked are criminals. The wicked are criminals that encroaches upon the Torah with disdain. They establish religious orders. He has given the earth. Did he not say he give it over unto whomever he will? Unto the lowest of men who are ruling the earth today. What man is ruling the earth today? What nation of people is ruling the earth today? He has given the earth over into the hands of the wicked. And Yah covers the face of the judges of the shop him. He is the one that is covering the eyes of his messengers thereof. Is, if it is not Yah, if it's not he, then who does it? He has covered their eyes because he is the one that has set this up. He is the one that has set the mark in the order of Yisrael. He is the one that is going to uh, eradicate his, his creation of the vileness of this mind that is constantly uprising against him. That is constantly defying the Torah of Yah. In our everyday activities, we don't realize we're doing that. When the wife rises up against the husband, it is defiance of the beauty of the Torah. When the man is not expressing the kind of beauty of Yahshua's love toward his wife, he's rising up against the order of the Torah. When a man doesn't teach his children the love of Yah, when a mother doesn't, when the Ema doesn't, when she doesn't promote that vitality and the strength, he's taught us how to sleep. And I want to say to you all in here, whether you Zachain, whether you, uh, I, I want you all, especially my men, to stay awake now. I will never, all of you all hear me now. You never see me going out on you when you're standing here. Don't do me like that. I'd rather see the elderly woman. You can sleep all day, mama. I know you hear me. Don't worry about that. But I don't want my strong man. And all of you are strong men. All of you. Every last one of you are a strong man. To be around me, you got to have some kind of strength. All the weak ones, they disperse. That's the truth. So you got to be a strong man. Stay awake. I mean that. Quit falling out on me, all right. Now folks go to a ball game three hours and they don't fall out one time. We're not going to be in three hours, but don't do that to me. Stay awake, all right. Train yourself. I will never dishonor you like that. I, will never, I don't care if he's up there. I don't care if he's up there. I don't care if he's up here. I don't care. I will never dishonor you like that. Never. All right. So don't do me like that. All right. Moving on. And same with you. Don't be sitting there on your couch eating chips and things like that. Hear what the messenger of Yah says. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A God in the book of Eo, he says, The earth is given. It is no thon. It has been a strive. It has been prescribed. It has been given. 
He has been permitted. That's what the word nothan has a, a variation of meanings. Whether it's, it's in, the, it's in the, the feminine or the masculinity, it makes no difference at all. Uh, it has the same uh, identity of the measure of the meaning of the word. You understand? Uh, it still catapults or it gives us the equivalence of the mind of God. He made man uh, and he made woman. He made them in the beauty of his image. And every word that Yah speaks is in the beauty of his power. He said he's given into the hands of the wicked. The wicked rules. Well, who are the wicked? Daniel Yah says, the most high rules in the kingdoms of men. And gives it to whomsoever he will. And sets up over it the lowest of men. The most depraved and the most corrupt. The men that will carry out the mandate that he has inscribed in the heart of Hashatan. The men that will be ruthless and kill your babies uh, and butcher your children and rob and steal from nations and bomb the hell out of your children. Uh, this is the mind of a beast. I've given it to nations and men uh, that don't give a damn about each other, will kill each other and cut each other's throat and rob. I've given it to, unto the lowest element of the species uh, that would desire to develop things that would burn your damn babies to the gates of hell, uh, trying to mimic me. That's the truth. I don't give a damn how we look at it. You must see it how it is. It's simple to understand. We don't understand it because we don't search out the Torah. We want to read things uh, by men that don't have a damn thing. It's amazing how people think they're receiving something for Yah, and they simply read a manifesto or an order of some other man. I'm not a reader when it comes to things like that. I'm being honest. I would be a liar if I say I do. I just, I said to my issue, look at all these books I got. About 30 books that, that I ordered over a period of time, and I haven't read one of them. I may pick one up for a moment, put it down. Because this book is more vital to me than those books. I can get everything I need out of this book. This book is more vital. I got, I got some wonderful books over there. But this book, when I pick this up, I find it all here, Yisra'ya. And they're literally thinking that they are concluding a matter by their own strength. Daniel Yah did not need anything to assist him in the revelation and the interpretation. You understand? Even Nebu knew that he had the Ru'ach of the Mighty One. And it was not just the Ru'ach of his magicians uh, and his Hakim, eh? those men that he thought to be wise, Yisra'ah. So he's given the earth unto the lowest of creatures, unto the lowest of a mind that operate without any kind of impunity. There's only one mind, there's only one nation that operates in the world without any impunity. That's this nation. It can kill your babies, it can rob your babies, the nation of Britain can go and bomb the hell out of you without any impunities. They're not going to bring their leaders before the World Council of Courts. But they will go into the nation of Africa and rob a little uh, petty small fry that they have established. And that's the truth. Let us be honest, Yisraya. And they will bring him to the Hague in the Netherlands and put him in prison all of his life. America went down to Mr. Nariega. He's been in prison all those years. You young ones don't know. They said that he was a runner of drugs or the narcotics. And he went to prison. And they went down to that country. Took that man out of power. Put him in prison here. And then they said, after that man served nearly 20 years in the lock and chains of a prison. He was of a sovereign nation. But Yah, he says, this is my work. And then after he served his time here, he was extradited to France to serve time in their prison. Is that right? And yet Mr. Bush can burn the babies and say we did not have the intelligence. We did not have all the intelligence without any kind of impunity. Russia can go bomb Georgia. Those are the same ethnicity, of the same spirit, of the same mothers and burn their babies to hell without any kind of impunity, sir. Britain can drop the bombs down on Libya and, uh, uh, and Misraim uh, 
and guard their damn little rose babies at night and don't give a damn about burning your babies that's the mind of Hashatan. it is the beast mind it is the mind of the wicked it is the mind that has no cognate consciousness of the power of Torah it's the mind that has no revelation of the most high it's the mind that has the mind of a god like beast a damn of a creature that doesn't give a damn it robs it kills for the damn pleasure I saw a clip one time where these lions had this hippotamus and they broke the hippotamus spine and just toured with it. Broke its spine. Two big male lions they got on his back and through that leathery tusk of skin they broke his spine. And then once they broke his spine, they began to, to uh, rip out the intestines. And the beast still living. And they're eating him. Usually lions, when they capture a prey, they're probably some of the most sophisticated hunters of all. Because the big male or the aggressive female, the first thing they will do will take their mouth and cover the breathing nostrils or they will cut off uh, the esophagus and they can't breathe that's what they will tell them and so that mind it torments for the olam has been nothing bestowed granted to the hands of the wicked and that is the truth hallelujah there is no witness there. Well, look at what it says in Eob 16, 11. It's not Eob the epitome of Yisraya. His name means hate, right? Shonei. Look what he says. Eob, Job 16, 11. Yah has Shagah. Does it say in your writings that Yah has delivered? Does it say that Yah has delivered me to the what kind of man? What kind of man? What kind of man? Unto, come on, Yisrael, Yah, talk to me. What kind of man? Unjust and evil and evil man. Yah has delivered. Yah has delivered me to the unjust man and turned me over into the hands of who? Of who? Of the wicked. The Rosha is not Eo the epitome of Yisraya, is he not? Uh, he's not the metaphoric example of the house of Yisraya. Is he not the nation of Yisraya? It's not his afflictions, the, the affliction of Yisraya. And yet, in all of that, uh, you turn this man over unto the wicked. You put a people in affliction and you give them wicked rulers. Yah says, I want you to know that I rule in the affairs of man. Listen, Yisraya. He rules in the affairs of man. Don't forget that. Don't allow yourself to be broken and say, well, uh, Yah is not in control. That's what Yisraya will say. Where is Yah? They're oppressing us. They're beating us to the gates of hell. They're killing our babies. Where is Yah? That's what they will say. And then when they began to do that, they became disillusioned. They began to go out and seek the gods. It's almost like a woman or man gets so depressed or so oppressed in a matter, they just go spending or they just start eating. There are people, because of matters and circumstances, they just eat and they just eat and they just eat and they just eat. That's right, Yosef. They just eat and eat and they become overweight. And there are people that become so depressed in matters, they never go out. They don't want to go out. The agony and the weight of that. And that's what Yisrael did when they, when they would have the sis just like Eob that Yah has delivered. He has, he has granted, uh, he has given the permission, he has given the authority, he has given the might. Yah has Shagah, me over unto the unjust man, the evil man, the evil, the wicked, despicable mind of a man that hates Yah. 
And he said, not only that, uh, but he has turned, he has shub, he has shub, he has turned over, or he has turned me over into the yah of the strength. Uh, look the hands again, into the hands of the rasha, the wicked. Uh, men that are unjust ha have no ability to be just, uh, have no mind of Torah, they cannot make a righteous judgment. They cannot. Yah has said to the Shoftim, close your eyes. I don't want you to judge the matters. Because they're going to know that I rule on the account of man. This is going to get beautiful as we go, believe me. Hallelujah. And wonderful truths and revelations will come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's Yah Yisra Yah. He is the one. Back to Daniel Yah. Chapter 4, verse 18. I must lay down foundational uh, truths of the Tasnith, the parent. Without parents, you won't understand the reason for the mark in the mind or the head or in the right hand. We must understand that. And if you don't see that in the writings of the Nombi, the prophets, or in the wisdom of the Torah, it is of no validity at all, Yisraya. He, he cries here in Daniel chapter 4, verse 18. I want to read that verse and jump to verse 24, experience. He says, this dream, I, Melech, Nebuchadnezzar, I have seen. Now, O you, O Bel, Bel, Belshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof. For as much as all the wise men, the Hechim, men of my kingdom, they are not able to make known unto me the interpretation. But he declares that, but you are able. We know that Yah is able. He says, but you are able. Why? For the Ruach of the Kadash, Kadosh one is in you. We must know among us. Whether they are men that are able, whether they have the ruach of Yah. I had someone to write me last night and say, this man up here, he said, in the city of Philadelphia, he said, the man doesn't even have the ruach of Yah. And he was pleading with me to say, are you teaching this doctrine ruach? He said, when I met you, this was a beautiful ark that came to meet me. The last time I went to Philly, came with two other Ach. When they realized that I was going to be there, they came, they drove from New Jersey. He said, I didn't even know, Reak. And when I found out you were going to be here, I called the Ark, and we came to be here for nothing else, just to meet you, my Ach. And so I told him the fellowship with that beast. And uh, I could tell at that moment, even as he has written me in the past, that he knew that there was something just wasn't right. You know, although I see weaknesses in men, that's all right. I, I know that if they stay by me and if they listen, you began to see a man maturate as a strong man. You begin to see a maturity. You began to see an unction. Because that man has said before the people, when he came, when I was there in Delaware, he said, I'm telling you, my life has been revolutionized by this man. He has helped me tremendously. It's only when they began to put themselves forward, instead of the truth forward, they began to lose sight. It's only when they began to compare themselves with me, hell, what am I? I am a nothing. I don't have a damn thing. I have no riches. And for the bastards to think that I own this land, you dirty bastard. I own no properties. I possess nothing. And neither do you. We possess it. You understand? And that's why it's not in your hands to sell it or anything in case uh, uh, my life is uh, 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 demised. You're not going to do the other one wrong either. I will, man. Hallelujah. Had to get that in. Moving on. He said, but you are able, Daniel, for the Ruach of the Kodash one is in you. Verse 20, quickly. 
It says here, he said, my melech, the tree you saw, which grew, which sprung out of the earth. He said it was a choach. It was strong and mighty. It was a strong tree. Whose height, whose pride, whose wisdom of matters in the earth, it reached to the Shemayan. Is it not the wisdom of mankind today? Is it not reaching beyond the Shemayan, satellites by the thousands, hundreds of thousands, venturing beyond what Yah said, telling us that there are 10, 50 moons, planets have 20 moons. They don't know a damn thing. They don't know if it's a planet. Yah made the earth. At the other creations, they can never see them or reach them. In, I don't care what kind of telescope they have. He made the moon. He made the moon and the sun, one to rule in the night and rule to rule in the day. See, this mind goes beyond because of his own premonition and his own arrogance to say that there are thousands of moons. That's a damn lie. He made a moon. He made one moon and he made one sun. He made one moon and he made one sun. These are damn liars. They are corrupt and even their height, their arrogance reaches into the heavens and Say, yeah, there are 10,000 moons lies. Believe me, the creations of the planets of Yah, the natural eye could not even see them. They can't see because the blackness of the darkness where Yah hides his secrets, the finest of the telescopes can never reach through it or never see through it. These are pigs and liars. They're bastards. They are the bastards slip. The mind is a bastard's mind. It has no inheritance so the bastard realized that he has no inheritance it will kill everybody thinking that i will be the last one left then it will all belongs to me that's the mind of a bastard to rob to kill to destroy people and nation and say it will all be mine it's almost having a cake that big and you don't want anyone to have any you began to eat you get sick and you eat everything you get so sick you began to hate the cake and that's why they're going to hate this whore. You understand? I'm moving on. I'm proceeding on. All right. Hallelujah. He said, the tree that you saw which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto Hashem I am, and the sight thereof to all the earth. It was such a magnificent, uh, uh, powerful entity that the whole earth marveled at it. That they saw the splendor and the excellence that the whole earth marveled at it. Listen to this, whose leaves were fair, and the peri thereof, if there was much fruit. We got to understand what he was talking about here. And it was meat for all, under which the beasts, or the demonic powers, the beasts of the fields uh, dwell. There is no powers of demonic structure that is greater than the demonic structure in this nation. And they do well, they, they train our minds by all kinds of media and all kinds of utensils. They train our minds to hate the most high. Train us, train our children to hate Yah. He said, and under which the beasts of the field dwell. And this is, this is a tremendous revelation here. And upon whose branches... The fowls of the heavens had their habitation. I want to show you those files. And I want to show you that tree in the book of Gilyana, Revelation. Revelation chapter 18. And you hold that in Daniel, turn quickly to Revelation 18. Gilyana, quickly, I'm moving. Yokohara said, and all, after all of these cataclysmic mayhem, and after all these things, uh, he said, I saw another melach. Coming down from Hashem Ha'am. This one had power that was gadol. It was great. It was magnificent. It was, beyond, it was beyond descriptive superlatives. Great power. And the earth was awakened. It was lightened. The light of the Torah was revealed with his splendor, his excellence, his beauty. And this is what he did. He cried, he cried with a, with, with, mightily uh, with a strong voice. He sang... Bavel, is this not Bavel in Daniel? 
This is Babel. He says, Babel the great uh, is fallen. We think that this nation of Babel the spirit uh, is fallen when the economy is fallen. That's not so, Yisrael. He said, Babel is fallen. It is fallen. And she has become the habitation of devils. Daniel Yah said, the beasts of the fields dwell there. This is the mark of man and beast. This is the mark of the demonic structure of hell, the demon dialogue that dialogues in the mind of man, Yisraeli. I pray we hear this simple truth. Babel fell. This was the pattern of the failure of Babel. And in the failure of Babel, the mind that uh, was promoted and the mind of strength uh, is the mind of the beast that is against Yah. It is the mark of the mind of the beast, Yisrael. He said, they become the habitation of shadims, of demons and devils. Uh, and, and the whole, and upon the branches, it said, the branches, uh, and upon whose branches in Daniel, uh, the fowl of the heavens uh, had their habitation. That's where they lived. And he says, and she became the cage of every unclean and hateful fowl of every hateful bird. And that is what her branches, her tentacles, her ritualism, her holy days, her festivities, they represent the arrogance of her branch, branches. Her arrogance exudes herself above Yah. That's the mind of man and beasts. That is the mark. Anytime we say to Yah, there is no power in the most high than woe unto us, Yisraya. And so what has become the very place uh, of gathering uh, and the place uh, of reproduction, uh, it is on the branches, the strength, the doctrines of the religious whore, the, the counsel uh, of the wise of this nation. And once a nation does that, uh, then they become the holding cage of every unclean thing that is from hell. Uh, because the next verse uh, solidifies that for us in a way that is profound. Verse 3. Three uh, of Revelation 18. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Do you hear that? I want you to remember that of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth have waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Uh, through her lies and her deceptions. Uh, through her greed for the oil. Through her greed for the gold. Uh, through her greed for the diamonds when they have babies. Uh, working in the diamond mines of South Africa. Believe me, that nation is not controlled by those uh, little folks over there. Uh, the, what we call the South Africans. Uh, it is still controlled by the De Beers and the riches. Uh, and the powers of the earth uh, they have given them crumbs uh, that they will fight and kill each other over a damn crumb yes. that is the truth and a sadiq man he will cry against the injustice the injustice and the wickedness uh, of a nation uh, that nations drink of her damn ignorance uh, and the wine of her bosom uh, and he began to nurture that mind uh, a mother's titty her milk nurtures the mind of the child uh, if the mind doesn't grow the body doesn't grow that is what the milk is for us not to fill the damn belly to nurture the mind yeah. and so the bastards out of hell uh, make you give them similar likes, uh, to destroy their mind I, I am not going to stop. I'm not going to stop calling them bastards. I am not. Forget it. Turn away and go to someone else. You're looking for delicacies that this preacher is not going to give it to you. Hell, we're in the rut that we're in because of the soothsayers. Say things to accommodate our flesh. And to make us to be at ease in Tizayon. That we don't even know when the storm is coming. That the storm comes and overtake us. We get wet. We don't even know we're getting wet. You're not going to press me into no corner. I don't care who you are. Hallelujah. He says that this has become the place of the vile spirits and unclean things. Verse 22 of Daniel chapter 4. He says unto him. It is you, O Melech. It is you, King. It is your arrogance. It is your pride. 
It is you, America. Was that not a Pacific nation or a city that represents uh, the very power of a nation, was it not? He said, it is you, O king. It is you, O king. It is you, O king, that are grown and you have become, uh, he said, you have become tikach, not kalach. You have become strong. You have become tikach. You become arrogant. You become tik tikach. You become arrogant. You exude yourself. Isn't that, do we not wrestle with that spirit? You become arrogant? That you exude yourself and exalt yourself? You puff your chest thinking you have done something. You're more justified than the one that you perceive do not have the tools you have. It's wrong, Yisrael. He said, you become tikhaf. You become arrogant. You become haughty. You're full of pride. Well, I know this. Do you know that? I know one thing. You're wicked, young man, and you're a weak coward. You become strong, and for your greatness is grown. He said, the power of your strength has reached unto Yah. Now, Yah takes notice. He is the one that established you. But you're so arrogant that you have turned your head away from him. That's what Israel has done. And once we began to turn our heads away from him, at these caged, unclean birds, everywhere you go, they are unclean spirits, Israel. They're talking to your mind. They're trying to penetrate your mind. They're trying to establish a thought in your, in your mind to create a concept. The enemy is, is on the job 24-7. He doesn't rest day and night. He is as a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour. And a lion, and a lion does not nibble, it devours. You ever see a pride of 30, get on a will of beast? I've seen that. In clips. They devour the will of beast. The choice meet the belly. They devour the will of beast. They strap at each other and fight like beasts. And the strong one get theirs and then the weak ones gnaw on the bones. I have heard that that is one of the most decimated population of beasts during times of drought and chaos. The strongest of the beasts in the jungle are yet the most fragile. 80% of the, the little cubs never reach maturity. And that's it. The male, he will sit down and gorge his belly because without him, there's no strength of protection. It's your milak. Your greatness have grown. You have reached into Hashemayama and your dominions to the end of the earth. There is only one nation of people that their dominion, their power reaches to the end of the earth. And it feeds the same type mindset, the countries. There are three sixes that are prominent with man and this nation. It is what they call the democracy government here. That they rule by democracy, but that's a damn lie. It is called their most powerful entity of what they call their commerce, their mercantile. That is the six. All of this is man. It is not the government of, man, uh, of Yah. The government of Yah is Torah. The government of man has the mark of man. It has the deception of man. So it's the democracy. It is a capitalist system. It is a system of greed, Yisrael. It has man's input. It has man's desire. It has man's purpose. It is established uh, on the premonition and the power of man. It is this, this mercantile. Uh, and this mercantile generates wealth uh, and greed and loss. Uh, and it supplies it with some of the most crazies of imagination to fulfill in its own damnable lust for man. There's one six. Uh, there's another six. Uh, and it is his power to seek uh, the, the hidden mysteries of the God of the worlds and religion that's why every president you see call upon the religious leaders they call upon the Muslim leaders for their counsel they call upon the Jewish leaders they call upon the Christian leaders and the rest they don't give a damn with when Mr. Barack Hussein Obama had when he calls for the council of the magicians and the soothsayers he called the Jewish leaders 
He called the imams or the Islamic leaders, and he called the damn greedy fat dog Christian leaders. And they all meet on the one auspice or on one covering, and that's the name of God. Damn your damn God. They meet under the name of God. They meet under the name of God. You don't pray in no damn Jesus name of the Lord. You meet under the banner of God. Allah Akbar, God is greater. Allah Akbar, Elion, 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 God is great. They all meet under the same banner. They all meet under the same banner. And they sit there. They need a prophet to walk in. Yah caused the prophet like Daniel Yah to walk in and say, you're liars. And Mr. Barak Hussein Obama said, that man has the ruach, yeah. A vile king knew that he had the ruach because those spirits were corrupt. He knew that. Can I move quickly? This is important. I want to lay the foundation of the mark here and a few verses before I close today, all right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Verse 24 quickly. He says, uh, verse 24 of chapter 4, Daniel Yah, he said, this is the interpretation. This is the pesh'ah of the revelation, the interpretation of uh, Melech. He said, and this is the decree of the Most High. This is what Yah declared. Everything I read, did not Yah declare? Did he say that the Most High he said, I'm doing this to show among you that are living that the Most High, he rules in the kingdom of men, and he gives to whomsoever he will. He grabs the lowest of the earth and gives them power because he knows that they will do the deeds, they will follow pursuit of the dark powers of hell. They will be open sepulchers for the unclean spirits, Yisrael. Yeah, that's for real. You all don't have to love me. You need to love me, all right? Don't fight against me. Just love me. You may not have understanding, but as we walk this way, you will understand by and by as we go. By and by, when we overcome, see, by and by as you walk, it's a progressive thing. We're babies. That's what we are. We need some strong meat to get strength on our bones and sinew. All right? He gives them the interpretation. He says, uh, and this is a decree of the Most High, which is come upon my master, the Melech. He said, this is what's going to happen. They shall drive you from men. You will not have the conscience of man. You will not, have, uh, you will not even have the sense of man. They will just drive you from men. And your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. And this is, uh, this is the decree of Yah. He is driving uh, those uh, that he has ordained for perdition. Uh, he is driving them from men. What men of truth, men of the Torah, men of light. He is driving them uh, and they are made their dwelling with beastly men, uh, with unclean men, corrupt men, uh, vile men. Uh, and they dwell, they smell, they stink, uh, they lie, they are corrupt. Uh, he said, he has driven you from men, and you, your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make you to eat grass. He commands us to eat lechem, the bread. They're going to make you eat the grass. They're going to make you eat uh, uh, the, the, the things that Yah doesn't intend for you to consume. He did not make us to eat grass, yes, right, Yah. And there are things that he doesn't intend to go down into our ruach, into our, into our nefesh, our ruach of life. He does that things he doesn't want us to sit there and listen to. There are things he doesn't want us to read. There are things you don't read. You don't look at the, the news on faggots and all that. Don't read that kind of damn mess, Yisra, yeah? You don't read what them whores are doing. You don't look at them whores getting naked. You don't do that. You don't go on the internet and do that kind of search. We had a bastard here that was, uh, that was pulling up naked women uh, and, and doing some vile things here. And you would think he was the most innocent individual here. He was vile and corrupt. A damn dirty bastard. He didn't give a damn what he brought upon us. You damn bastards out there, I'm not a thief. I'm an honorable man. I don't give a damn what you say. I rob no one. I've never held the ones that call themselves widows here. They weren't much of widows. 
Because the widow is supposed to look after the house of those uh, and clean it, watch strangers' feet. So when a stranger come out, a widow, a, a, a widow woman, she should, she should watch the stranger's feet. Uh, hell, the ones that have been widows here, they sat on their asses. That's the power of a widow. She goes and cleans a man's house like that, up back there that has no wife. Uh, and makes sure his clothes are washed. Uh, because he's going to make sure she has bread uh, and her house is warm. Uh, and there's enough for her. She goes to a man's house like that and clean his house and take care of that. Uh, hell, though they call themselves widows, uh, they, they became wanton like y'all said. They, they became lustful uh, and they don't have a damn thing. Hell, they were not widows. Uh, when indeed is a precious thing. If she's a widow, come on, Yisraya. Don't make me get angry, all right? These bastards say things they don't even know what they're saying. They're stupid bastards. They are ignorant bastards. They are the bastard slip. And don't get offended when I say that. They are bastards. Did not Yeshua call Yehuda Iscariot a bastard? He called him the son of perdition, of death and hell. He had no heritage, no lineage. When he tried to buy something back, he couldn't buy anything. He had no riches. These bastards don't have a damn thing. That's right, my friend. Birds of the same feather flock together. Hallelujah. I love you, Sraya. I will never do you wrong. He says... Uh, in verse 25, they shall drive you from men, and you shall dwell, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make you to eat grass like oxen. And you shall be wet with the dew up upon the heavens seven times shall pass over. He said, until it is fulfilled, until the perfect mandate of Yah is solidified in you. You understand? That's why he's given us warning, Yisra'ya. We must allow his Torah to be complete in us. He said, until seven times, uh, he said, till you know, till you experience that the Most High, again he says, he rules where? In the Melchut, the kingdom of men. This mind of the beast says, hell no, you're not going to rule. But we say in our own self-grandizing stupidity of our pride and our arrogance, nobody's going to tell me. And that's what this, this whore, this Jezebel, teach the people. You don't need nobody to tell you. Let no man tell you. That's what they teach today. You don't need nobody. That you did with Philip when he said, how can a man understand this? And Philip said, I'll bring the revelation of that. He was a powerful man. He's from the house of Candace. He was not some little broke back individual. Yet the revelation of that truth was expressed. And, and, and when, 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 when Philip had finished that, uh, he was taken up. Uh, and that man was sealed with the revelation of Almighty Yah. His mind was sealed and concealed to take that truth back to the house of the Kushite. That's what it was. The problem with man today, we want to be arrogant and to show when we find out something, we want to show everybody we know it. And we think we know something. You don't really know a damn thing. You don't have the articulate skills to explain anything. You just talk. That's sad. It's one thing I must say. I've never been like that. I have never. And I can tell when someone is teaching me something for knowledge or experience. Or what they show me. I can tell when someone's trying to show me they know something. That's, oh man. Stop it. It is sad. It's sad. He said you're going to know that the most I rule in the kingdom of men. And again he says. Does he say this in Daniel 4.25? And he gives it to whosoever he will. Does it say that? Yes. He gives the kingdom. He tells us who he gives it to. Hallelujah. In, in verse 17, he says, uh, and gives it to whosoever I will. Uh, he said, and set up over it the lowest of men. Now, Yah's the one that set up the men in the kingdom. Come on, Mr. Obama would tell you that he is a, what was that word he used? He said he was a, he was a mutt. Really, when you listen to the story, and I've listened to some of that, of his life, I don't even think that when, when the mother got pregnant with him, that she and the African man was, were married. He said, and raised in his grandfather's house, 
The word nigger was an expression that those niggers, the niggers this, the niggers that. And so the man was in a twisted type of child raising. He knew that his father was black as salt. His mother was creamy as cream. And then the insult from his, he called him grandpa, a papa, that how he insulted those of, of, of other skin complexions, that that's all he heard, the niggers this, the niggers that. It's in his autobiography. I've listened to it. And how he was confusing with the school. He was a low man. Mr. Obama, he had a, he had a mental, psychological uh, 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 imbalance. So the only thing he didn't want to do was excel in school. We went to school. The white kids shunned him. Then those that were of a darker complexion said that, uh, Who are you and what are you? And so when he found out in life that the only ones that would actually accept him uh, or would embrace him were those of the darker hue skin. Uh, those of the lighter hue did not accept him. Uh, so he go embrace Michelle Obama. Yeah, we don't want to deal with that. We don't want to see the matters of this damn Babel uh, and her wickedness and the man that she creates in the people. We don't want to talk about it because we got so much damn corrupted in us and it must come out, man. The man was twisted. I've listened. It almost makes you feel sad. Really? I said, for hours and listen to it. I'll get the book for you all to listen, all right? We want to put it on the radio station. I want you to listen to it. It's a sad book. Very sad. I will get that book. I'll put it on the station so you can listen to. All right. You get it from Amazon.com. I'm going to buy it in the audio form, okay? It's sad. Very sad. Very, very sad. So he began to develop a dysfunctional attitude, even against the people of the darker hue. He has that. That's just a fact. Ah, oh, look at us. We don't want to deal with truth and things like that. We don't want to deal with the reality of things. We like to be scuttlebottled and deceived and tricked. Mr. Barack Hussein knows one thing. That those that are identified by the epitaph of Negroes, niggers, African Americans, niggaboo, jigaboo, he knows one thing. Of all the people in this nation, is there a people that will be faithful by him, even though he doesn't do a damn thing for them? It's that people. They're going to stand by him. Because they have the ability for misgiving. I will never forget one of our very wealthy senators here in South Carolina. He is the state senator. His name is Mr. Ted Vick. I was with him one day driving a vintage Bel Air belonging to him. He said, drive this for me, Pastor. I said, man, I am not driving that car. He said, get in that car, man. Now, he, he's younger than me, you understand. The man has a master's degree. He is a, he is a commissioner office in the United States Service. He's a, he was a millionaire before he was 33 years old, you understand? He has told, he has shared with me, he has opened up unto me. I said, Ted, I don't want to drive that. He said, come on, Pastor, I'm going to drive that thing. Never want a car. He took me to his home. I met his mother. I went to his mother's shop. She has a shop down there in Chesterfield. It is so swanky, you would think you're walking in Fifth Avenue in New York. I went to her home. And the little maid that's been with them, she's been there all her life. She's still there. Wealthy people. And we, we, when I took the Bel Air to his destination, he got in the car with me and he said this to me. I will never forget. This, these are not my words. I'm not interjecting. We were driving down the highway. And Ted Vick, he hit the steering column like this. Bam. And these are his words. I didn't say nothing. I let the man talk. These are his words. He said, I want to tell you something, Riach. Black people are not like white people. He said, when I won the election, 
He said, I didn't even go to my Southern Baptist church. But I became the congressman. I went over to that people that were faithful and stood by me. They were loyal. See, that's how Negroes are. He said, I went to that house. That's what he said to me. I, I wasn't astonished. I was astonished at his brutal honesty. His brutal honesty. And then he be, just began to open up. He said, they don't do like us. They don't treat people. They, they do differently. Because Negroes think that they always have to prove that they care for someone. Negroes got to always try to prove that they love someone. And they really don't give a damn about each other. That is the truth. Hallelujah. I didn't say that. So uh, uh, am I trying to convey something that I'm trying to cause division? That's what he said. We were in the county office one day. <clears throat> and he says to me, he said, Pastor Robert, he says, no way that a black man here in this county. He said, we have a judge, a sitting judge that did not even graduate from high school. He said, and I got a bill in Congress now that that will never be. He says, no way that a black man without a high school education can be a sitting judge. And we walk downstairs and I'm listening to this man. Come on here in the South. I'm not saying anything. I'm just listening. And we walk downstairs and all of these Caucasian deputies, they were there. And there stood up this very regal man of the dark hue of skin, probably about Zohin Yaramiya's size. He wasn't, maybe a little thinner, but he was every bit his height. He stood up there. Everybody knows Ted Vick. He's a millionaire. Everybody. And he says to them, he said, hey boys, that's how he talk now. Hey boys, how y'all doing? Everybody, hey Ted, how you doing Mr. Vick? They know him. And uh, he says to them, he say, boys, I want to show you all something. He say, what it is, Ted? He said, you all see that man right there? Uh, come on, deputy. What's he called? You know him. The, 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 the man of the docu, he knew Ted. He said, you all see that deputy right there? That's going to be your next sheriff right there. And as we proceed out of the courthouse, he looks at me. He said, you know, Pastor Roberts, it's a shame. He said, above all things we need here in this county is a black sheriff. We need a man of that, of that mindset. I didn't say anything. I just listened to the man. You know why he would share that with me? Can I tell you why? Because he knew I was an honest man. He knew that. He knew I was honest and forthright. Because when he would say things out of the Torah, I would correct him. I said, that's, that's not what it says, Ted. And he's a Southern Baptist preacher. And when I began to talk out of the Torah, he could not even open his mouth. I'm not, not this man has a master's degree. He couldn't even open his mouth. He showed a great reverence. He was quiet. Uh, he did not, he's a Southern Baptist preacher. He did not say one thing. He did not even open his mouth. He did not try to challenge me. He asked questions. Well, what does that, or what is that? Okay. Oh, I see. Well, he can take that back to the Southern Baptist whole house. Hallelujah. We are people that don't want to deal with the realities of truth. And so this mind, the enemy continue among Yisra'ya. The enemy is trying to ferret out Yisra'ya. Trying to ferret her out. As Shotan desired to sift uh, Hepha, that's what the enemy is trying to do. And it, do. and it doesn't do the process of the mind. I don't give a damn if a man's skin is dark black, uh, dark brown, or creamy color. A poor man has the same kinds of battles uh, of any man. I don't give a damn what color your skin is. The rich don't give a damn about you. The powerful ones that rule, they don't give a damn about you. As a matter of fact, they'll despise you more. You got to get that damn mess out of your head. Yeah. It's damnable. Yeah. Someone must cry loud. Yeah. And I'm going to do it. I don't care if I offend you. I don't care if I offend the black man, the white man, the Jew man. I don't give a damn. Yeah. Get it out of you. Yeah. We are Ikhad and Yahshua. We are one. Hallelujah. Yeah. We are one. And I'll kalura from one extreme to the other. All right. Hallelujah. Damn whiteness. It's a social word for social activities and a club, all right? That's all. It has nothing to do with truth. 
Moving on, because I want to close here. I'm not going to be able to get to what I want to today, but that's all right. Is this making sense today? Yeah. All right, then. Okay. It says in, 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 in verse 33, it was fulfilled. Daniel Yah, chapter 33. I want to get to one little last thing. And then next week, I promise you, as I get into the mark, it's going to be a very dynamic expose. You're going to learn things and see things in scripture. You read and you say, wow, that is so easy. It doesn't take a master's mind to understand this. It just takes a faithfulness of obedience and wrestling with one's own flesh and denouncing one and bearing up the stake of Yahshua HaMashiach. It says in Daniel yeah, verse 33, see, and the same hour was the thing shuf. It was fulfilled. It was completed. It was shuf. It came to an end. The same hour was it fulfilled. Upon Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven, not just asked, he was driven by the spirit from the mind of a man. From the mind, a man is one that has the ruach of Yah in him. He knew that Daniel Yah was not like the others. He was driven from men. Hallelujah. Yah made man for fellowship, didn't he? For to have an experience with him, to, to enjoy him. And any time our minds do not enjoy Yah, uh, the revelation of Yahshua, we have been driven away from the very nature of a man. So we're driven from men and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with dew of the heavens. Till the hair grew uh, like eagle's uh, feather and like the nails of a bird's claw. It's one thing that he did not have. His, his claws drew, and he grew feathers like an eagle. Did he not? But it's one thing that uh, that power is only designated to one people. Let me turn that quickly. It's in Revelation. I want to read this. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 12. Quickly. Revelation 12, 14. Let's read this right quick. Hallelujah. It says that he had, uh, he said that his hair grew like eagle's feathers. But Revelation 12, 14 says, And the woman Yisrael, the elect of Yah, they were given two wings, see. These and us were given two wings. He had feathers. He could not escape the hand of God. But we're going to escape the damnation of this mind. She was given two wings as a great eagle. Not feathers like an eagle. She was given the wings of a great eagle uh, that she may fly into the wilderness. Uh, and to the bimid uh, to be to be strengthened by the Torah of Yah. Was well, not the Torah given in the bimid to Yisrael. She fly into the wilderness. For what? Into her place. That's her place. Where she is what? Nourished for a time and a time and a half time for three and a half years from the face of the serpent. You hear that, Yisraya? He grew wings and feathers like an eagle. But Yah said, we're going to be given the wings of a great eagle. And we're going to overcome, we're going to get above this damn mind of the beast and uh, of man. And we're going to get above that and hide ourselves in the Bimetz bar, where we're going to be nourished for a time and a season of time uh, until our king comes. Hallelujah. We're going to be nourished in the Torah, the word of Yah, Yisrael. That's our strength. Come on and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he grew claws and nails like a like, bird claws. Verse 34, and at the end of the young, the days, Nebuchadnezzar, it says, uh, this is amazing because then he lifted up his eyes to heaven. Hold that right there. And turn quickly to Lucas chapter 16, verse 23. We know the story of the rich man and El Isra or Lazarus, don't we? It says in Daniel 434, it says that Nebuchadnezzar, he lifted up his eyes to Hashemayim. Did he not say that? Let's look at Lucas 1623. Hold both places there. It says that the rich man and in hell, in Sheol, in the very mystery of the kingdom of darkness, 
He said, the rich man, did he lift up his eyes? He lifted up his eyes, being in torment. Yah says, among the living, it's going to be made known that I rule in the kingdom of men, and I establish, I am the one that establishing the mark of man and beza. It says, and in hell the rich man lifted up his eyes, uh, his eye and his spiritual perception being uh, matured, being in torment, uh, and he seen Abraham, the promises of Yah to Zerah from afar off, uh, and El Azar, Lazarus, in the bosom of Abraham. Same parable that this beast and the spirit of this beast, we see it so representative in the rich man. I was looking yesterday and I wanted to do a little uh, something on that last night. I, I will probably do it later on. It showed the richest Congress men and women. This Jezebel here, what's her name? Nancy Pelosi. She is worth $100 million. You think they give a damn, you think they have any sensitivity to the poor? They create bills, they create taxes, they create surplus for no one but the damn rich and powerful. A woman with $100 million plus, she doesn't give a damn about the mother whose breast milk is not sufficient for a baby because she doesn't have enough food stamps and money to eat. Well, it was her fault. Well, tell me Nancy Pelosi's fault. Uh, and tell me what this Jezebel and her wicked husband have done to rob and steal uh, and pillage and skim off the top of others. Oximiot and I were talking the other day and we were talking about the, we were talking about the timber or the pup around here. And he was telling me, he said, you know, Rick, the man told me the other day, he says uh, that the only people that are making money today are the middlemen. He said, he said, the sellers aren't making anything. They're robbing them. So the rich doesn't give a damn about the poor. This mind of man and beast, it doesn't care for the things of Yah. And there's a mark, there's an oath, there is a, there is a, there's a desire, there's a passion. There is a decree in that individual that they're going to fulfill it. And anything that is against their God, they know each other by their forehead. They can look at each other. They know each other by their handshakes. Isn't that the very sign of Masons and all of that? I did go to what they call the third degree of Masons, and I know the handshake. I'll show you the handshake. This is the Masons' handshake. When they meet each other, this is what they do. They grab each other's hand like this. Third degree, everybody has to meet on the third degree in that third knuckle. They have to do that. So I'm a Mason. Hmm? That's how they do it. That's it. I know that. Third knuckle. And then they cause us as damn fools to be so scared to say anything. So Masons, here I am. New World Order, here I am. And then the handshakes get even more bizarre. I went to the seventh degree. But you cannot even go into the house until you reach the third degree. And I went in there one time, and after I did that, and this little uh, troll of a man walks up to me, when he walking like that. Young man. When you get to the 33rd, you'll realize who the real God is. He said it like that. He didn't say it like that. He walks like a little troll. He's walking like this. Short little old man. Yeah. I was the youngest individual in that lodge. Young man, when you get to the 33rd, you'll find out who God is. I was ignorant. Not out of disrespect to the old man. I said, uh, I know who the mighty one is. But of course, I said, I know who God is back there. He said, young man, when you get to the 33rd, you know who the real God is. There are not many that get to the 33rd. And so I was somewhat a little uh, perturbed with him, and I said, I know who God is. And he said it three times, young man, when you get to the 33rd, you find out who God is. And he walked away like, like a penguin, like the penguin in the movie Batman. I was a kid, the penguin. And when he said that, I knew I didn't want to get to the 33rd. I knew from there I didn't want to go any farther. And that's when I said, same thing with the Eastern Stars. All of it is wicked. It is of the satanic order. It is vile. It is evil. Hallelujah. 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 
Again, it says that at the end of the days, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, he said, lifted up my eyes to heaven. See, he lifted up his eyes to heaven. Why did y'all allow this to let him know I'm the one that rules in the affairs of man? With the rich man, he said, I'm letting you know, you're going to lift up your eyes, but there's a gulf between you and uh, my El Azar with Lazarus. You can't get to him. He said, and my understanding returned unto me. So when we lift up, the, the, the Torah commands us to look up for our redemption. Uh, when he lifted up his eyes unto Yah to say, you are the mighty one. When he lifted up, he said, when I looked up the heaven, when I lifted up my eyes, he said, then my understanding, my binah, my understanding returned shub. It came to me. He said, and when that happened, I brach, I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that lives Olam forever. And then he concludes, who has dominion, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom, his Melkut, is from generation to generation. I'm going to stop there because if I go any farther in the next process, and then on next Shabbat, you don't want to miss that. I had to lay that for us to understand this combative mind and the mark of this mind and the very construct of it. The task neath how it begins and how it excels. And so Yah used the pattern of Bevel and the Melech to let us know even in this mind that this beastly mind, once one received that, see Yah had not allowed him to receive the mark. Because once he received that, he was lost. It's only when he looked up. That's where we must look up. For our redemption draw nigh. Stop looking down. Look up. Every now and then look up to the heavens and say, Toda Yah. Here we walk every day with our head down. We need to look up because say, calm, you're sure. Let the coming of my melech be. I do it all the time. I look up to the Yah. Look at your splendor. Look at your excellence. I'm going to stop that period, all right? Be the riches of Yah. And Yeshua HaMashiach rest upon you all. I hope that there was some, some scintilla of understanding out of that today. You may not grasp it all, but that's all right. By and by, when we overcome, you will understand a little bit. And then the next message will add a little bit more. And the next one add a little bit more. Then all of a sudden, it's like a beam of light. Boom. And you will say, as a free, as a free, as a free, as a no, no, as a free, as a free. To the ya, as a free. We greet you all, our friends and our enemies. I hope you were fed today. All right. Give you some fodder to come against me. Woo! So you have fodder. And you post your little childish things on our web. These are some fools out here. They're fools. They're flat out stupid. They're stupid. I should not. I won't talk about them. I leave them alone. They ain't even worth my breath, really. Hallelujah. You don't give strength to a homosexual of a man, a tweet, fag. I won't. So may Yara reach you all, our friends, our listeners, and my enemies. I appreciate you all, my precious friends. I want you all again, as I said, let us pray for our Achlesner, very precious man. I didn't hear from him last week. I knew it was something. But I want to give a space of time because I, you know, I could have wrote him, but I did not because he knows with he and I it's not about an offering. He's a beautiful man, beautiful Ark. He said to me one time, he said, you know, Ray Ark, he said uh, that uh, you're his wife, she deceased, she died, and he has his daughter, he's my age. And uh, he and I are about the same size too, big, big man. The same height and everything. <clears throat> And um, he said to me, Riyak, he said, the prophecies that have come forth on me, I've had women to walk with me and say, quote, God said, you're my husband. He said, I look at them. Why would he tell me that you're my wife? But he told you, he said, you are to. He said, I've had them come from far and near. He said, and if I believe any of them, I would be in a mess. He said, you'd be surprised. I believe he was in the church of God in Christ. He said, when his wife deceased, he said, they rose up like flies. They were like flour and jelly. God said, you're my husband. 
prophesy. Lata pakoto boom 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 ba. You lust for heifer. That ain't your husband. Liar. You understand? And y'all has sustained this precious ark with this daughter. I can't wait to see them. He's gonna be here. He's gonna he's gonna he's gonna be here, Tabernacle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a very faithful man. So you all pray for our Ark Lester, do yeah. and our Ark Jacob there. He's a precious man in there in, in Jacksonville, Florida. And also my Zach King, the McDonald. How are you doing? Hallelujah. I pray for our Zach King McDonald. We pray for them. He's a precious old man. He'll be here, Tabernacle. Listen, this way we're going to find those that will speak great swelling words and say they love me and they love you. And you will find that they will fall off. Because once they began, once this preacher began to plow into their buttocks and they realize they got a colon disease and they're unclean, they're not going to want to be around me. So I understand that. That's why y'all, as a young lad, my life, the way it was, I, I didn't have friends. That's why I cherish the friendship of the ark. I won't do anything to, to hamper our friendship. I won't do them wrong. I've never done any man wrong. I don't care what these folks say. Hallelujah. I haven't. Have you slapped the young man upside his head? Sure I have. A dirty little beast breaking in houses and stealing and trying to sex every damn thing I would bust his chest. But there has never been someone molested here. These bastards are such liars. But that's all right. Let them keep putting it up there. See, because if I was a man, just like when, when James jumped on him and he knocked his ass out, he knocked him out. Don't fight against him. He knocked his ass out, what he did. And his woman saw him get his ass knocked out. You understand? And even when the law said, look, less because there were witnesses saw what he had done. They said, we pressed charges. The only thing we had to do was go to court with the fool. And he would have been on probation or something. I guarantee you that. I said, no, nah, let it go. But when men begin to talk like that, that we, there's a difference between a 16-year-old and a 16-year-old having sex. Or 30-year-old man. In South Carolina, the age of consent with a young woman is 15. So if I'm 56 and a girl 15, I, if she consent, you can have sex with her. You understand? But molesting is a, a, a damn dirty bastard like me touch a little child that's 8 or 9 or 10. That's molesting. You understand? When a bastard does that, I, that, that, that right there, now that, that's a different ball. You're playing a different ball game, you dirty bastard. And you tell me little children are not going to do little things. This bastard has taken little activities, little children. You tell me little children, can I make a confession to you? I remember when I was about six, seven years old. I remember that. And you probably done the same thing. I had a cousin. Her name is Robin. We call her Birdie. And we were little kids. I'll never forget when we were, we were down by the creek because we didn't have running water. And we were down by the creek. We had, we would go to the creek and swim and play in the water. And then after we did that, we began to play with each other. You understand, Yisraya? That's what we did. It's a damn different thing if I'm a man like I am and a little six, seven-year-old girl, that kind of pedophilia spirit. That's wild. But little children do little, little damn wicked, stupid stuff. They have no conscience of what they're doing. Uh, that's not molesting. And these damn dirty bastards will tell a lie like that. That's not molesting. And you'll be surprised the children in you as well what things you've done when you were young, all right? Yeah, sure. Don't give me that bull chaff, okay? Don't give me them damn lies. Yeah. Brothers and sisters and cousins and all of that, all right? It's a different damn ball game when you get older. Yeah. You don't do it. I've never done that. I love the little children when they get a certain little age. No, uh-uh. I like the little babies when they're little. You hug them. And they start getting older then. She's getting a little older now for me. So I guess I have to take care now. Get a little older. I do everything before everyone. See, when a man says someone is molesting, that's a dirty bastard. That's not, that's not a bastard. That's a whore. If he's that bad, he got... He sight up his woman, Super Teresa. Why don't he put it up big badass James? He's a coward. Use the dress tell of a woman, you are a coward bastard. He's a coward bastard. They have posed him and that effeminate Charles. I post so much on our, I'm going to take it down. I said, I'm not going to give them the right to distort our, we're the one that's spending energy, time, and money to get that up. I'm not going to let them bastards do that. It's all right every now and then they make a post, you know. And the, you know why they're making the post? 
One yesterday he said this. Yeah, I, I hope he hears this. He says that when they treat the people who leave from there like dog, like dirt, he is so miserable as hell. He has nobody. He wants somebody. He never had nobody that would show him any kind of, any kind of sensitivity of love like this man. I would have never brought James back here to live. Never. That's why we went in $21,000 worth of debt for that land. I would have never let him come here to live. I knew what he was. He's a liar. He's unclean. And so if he got courage, take Super Teresa down. Hallelujah. And you better be glad I watched out for her too. You understand? And put up big badass James. Coward. Chuck B, you faggot. Why don't you say Charles here? Fag Charles. That's what he is. A flat out faggot. He's a faggot. So I don't care what they say. All right. Reason I'm saying that because we have people that go on our way up there, enjoy what we put there, and let them know, don't defend me. Torah, uh, Torah, Torah servant of Yahweh, don't defend me with thee. Don't defend nothing here for me. I don't need you to do that. Let them put up there. If well, I can put up there what I want to and take it down, all right? Hallelujah. They're cowards. That's what they are. Yabrakyu Yisraya. That's all right. I got that in, all right? I got nothing else in. I got that in. They're afraid of me anyway. They're afraid of me. I whip both of them together. I knock them both out. Of I take both of them together. And you would have thought that, you know, you got a nice blessing there. You would have, you would have backed off us, my friend. Believe me, they, they'll listen. They, they'll go and look. Make sure we keep this up there, Oxymion. Make sure I want this part on this message. Huh? But they're cowards. They're weak. They're feminine men. <laughs> Come on. A man sit around all day and want to write and gossip and tell stories on and just gossip on somebody. That's a fag. That's what faggots do. That's what a faggot do. When I was growing up, we didn't do that. We, we kept things on the cuff. Oh, he did that, but you watch him now. If he, if he tries that again, knock him out, man. So when David comes along like, whoa, watch him, man. Hey, ho, 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 what's up? What's up, player? Don't go that way. And they're waiting for you to mess up. And so there's go, always going to be one that try to antagonize you to make you do something that they can knock you out. I want to knock him out. Man, I don't like what he did, man. I don't like that, man. I'm going to knock him out, man. He numbered a hole. That's all he does. Talk and gossip. In my days, you didn't talk like that. Uh, among, uh, um, among those of the last you didn't do that. Faggots gathered together and did that. But the boys, you didn't do that. I'm knocking my, you did what? You what? You don't even snitch in the cities, man. They would kill you. They'd kill you dead. That's, that's the kind of environment I came in. We weren't killing each other. But that was a protocol and that was, a, that was an order. You didn't do that. And they found someone gossiping like that, like a little snitchy whore. They would say, man, this man is a, man, that man is a faggot. That's all he does. He gossip like a whore. And so we have not molested children here. These dirty bastards. I'm going to keep that, though. I'm going to keep it. Because uh, I was talking to Yosef. He said, oh, don't we have a, a, a freedom of speech? I said, yeah, we can say what we want to, but you can't go to the movie house and say fire. You can't incriminate someone with lies and and do that because they can sue you. They can, they can take you to the court. You can't call people on telephone harassing them because they can take you to the law. And there are people going to jail for that today. You understand? You, call, you don't do that. That's why I got all the records when Charles has called all his emails. I got all that. I got it. You can't do that. And they're fools. They don't understand that. And so I want them to put it up there. We're going to keep everything they put. We're going to keep it. I got a chronologue. I got all the letters that these fools have wrote me. I got the letters that this bastard say that Bynum, what he wrote me, how he spoke against you. Damn Bynum. Speak against you, the people of Yah. That's all right. Speak against me, but don't touch the little ones. I got all of that. I got every letter. A Bynum sent me a letter, special delivery. I still got it. To show you the cowardness of this weak man. I got what they wrote. I got the letters that Pennington, this beast of a bastard, wrote. I got all of it. I keep it. And so I'm keeping all of their little remarks. They're accusing us. 
You cannot bring false accusations against one. Even the Torah tells you that. To say that our little children, even the sisters and the brothers have not done the things that they have. This one bastard, I want to say this before I close, put up that uh, there was an incident, I tell you that, listen, that happened here. It was, come on, this has been 10, 12 years ago. Ray Green has been going for him 12 years. That we had a little brother here named Thomas. And Thomas had that little prettiness to him that even some of the old women liked Thomas. He had a slowness of mind. They were, oh, Thomas is cute. Thomas. And all because Thomas was short, he was neat. So the little girls, they would admire Thomas. Like, look at Thomas, look at Thomas. And so this bastard put something up that someone molesting the man's daughter. He's a lying dog. And so what happened that day? Thomas said to Cindy, you sure are pretty. You look sexy. Well, Cindy, at that time of her age, she had, she, had some, she had some little parts on her body that was somewhat, you know, pronounced. And I knew her father would be crazy once that was told to him. His wife told me, I said, I'll handle it. And so when her husband came in, I called him. I said, Ray, let me talk to you. I said, I want to talk to you. And so I began to talk, and I told him what Thomas said. And he jumps up, man, that's boy. Well, he didn't touch her, his daughter. Thomas didn't touch that gal. I talked to her. I asked her, he said, she didn't know, sir. He said, okay. Well, I knew Ray because of his size. Thomas couldn't beat his, boy. come on, Thomas wasn't going to fight anyone. If I had to put my money on him and Yosef having to fight, I, I bank it even, honestly. And I wasn't going to let him do Thomas like that. You're not going to mess with him. And so when he jumped up, I jumped up. I hit the bench. Bam! And I got up. And I said, I tell you, man, I'm telling you now. Don't say one word to him. And I mean it, you understand. I got up. I said, don't you say one word to him. You understand, man. Don't mess with him. It's settled. And that's it. He knew the preacher wasn't playing. And this bastard writes something that is so awkward to that. He would have intimidated Thomas. And he wasn't going to do that here. You want to intimidate someone, intimidate me. Here I am. Do it to me. And on the same account, when Blair Bush treated him like a little coward out there, I said, you're not going to do that to him, Blair. And I didn't let him do that to him. So this bastard, this beast, these cowards, they don't even have the ability to tell the truth. That's what happened, Mama. No adult he hasn't raped anyone. Then he says that he that runs the radio room, he asks one of the elders to have sex with him. That's that bastard James. That's the lies that they tell. Isn't that corrupt? What elder here has ever asked the sisters, even though we have some corrupt men here, you want to see me naked? Nobody. But that's what these bastards putting up there. They're liars. That's wicked. You're going to tell the truth, tell the truth. He treats the animals wrong. He let the sheep stay in the field, 100 degree weather with no good. That's how stupid and twisted his damn mentality is. And his stupid woman too. They put that damn stupid mess up. They're miserable. They got someone like Jeff that should be their beat boy and just pan off him. He's nothing but a damn moocher. That's all they are. They don't give a damn about each other. These clowns that they hang with. And they all know that James is a damn liar. A prolific liar. He told a damn lie, oh, why, man? And why, man, a grinning coward? I've never said that. I'm saying, I hope that that coward hears it. I've never said that why, man, did not give any money here. I've stood here and tell you, he bought the lawnmower for us. I made a mention of that. And I said to James, one day I said to all the brothers, I said in the last year, why am I not really good? He doesn't give any money. Every, about every three or four months he may give it on, but he doesn't give any money. Because I pull him aside when I say, is it something you need help? I notice you've just stopped giving on. Oh, no, no, I'm going to stop by giving. And this bastard takes that and says that I say, why am I never I've never said that. Tell, show me anywhere I've said that. I've never said that. I will be telling the life I said that this man, uh, he, his, his, his conscience is so sick, he's a dirty bastard. Well, why are you doing it like this? Because he's putting that on our website, on our YouTube that others can see. 
And I hope one of the jackasses of a cowards are there to tell him what I said there. And leave this up there, Oxymion. Don't take nothing off. And so Yas, servant order, that's what these bastards are. No adult has ever touched a child. No one. You know that. No adult. If he did, I would call the law. He touched a young girl, I would call the law. You wonder what he's touched or his woman touched in their mind. All right. Hallelujah. And I said before his face, coward. Men like that that tell lies is wrong. We should speak the truth one to another. Even strangers you speak the truth to. You don't lie on somebody. You don't like me, I don't give a damn. You don't even like yourself. I don't care if you don't like me, especially a piece of trash. I will say this in my closing. What if his own of his own nation said to me one day, his name was Keith. What's his name? Morton? Norton. Norton. He calls me one day and he tells me, he say, Ray, I, I like you people down there. These are his words. You are good people. I say the issue is not about us being good, what we are. He was a Caucasian. He said, but I want to tell you something. James is a dirty cracker. He called him that. I didn't. He said, he's a dirty cracker. And you're going to find out he's a dirty cracker because he's going to do you wrong. Well, he couldn't do anything to hurt us. And James F. is a dirty cracker. And Charles Bradford is a little effeminate faggot. How about that? Now, come on. Throw some hands with me. How about that? Can't go around. I want that up there so in case someone listen. Torah servant, one of those. Then no, all right. We don't mess with them. We don't mess with nobody. We're not trying to interfere with no one. They have left from here. We leave them alone. We don't say nothing about them. We don't write nothing about them. I don't say nothing about nobody. I don't care who they leave. Leave them alone. We don't put nothing up about them. We don't discuss them uh, or on the broadcast or nothing like that. We don't discuss them. We leave the people alone. We don't mess with you. Go on. Yeah. Leave us alone. Yeah. If we're doing wrong, if the law is waiting for me to fall, then I will fall. All right. You don't have to. You don't have to. You, you don't have to do anything to assist them. If I'm that crooked, it will be found out. If I'm a damn lover of money, and I love money, it will, this will come to an end. But it's not coming to an end. We don't mess with nobody. We don't interfere with them. We don't encroach upon them. We don't bother them. We don't do anything. But they bother us. They come to our website. They look. They're spying. They're surveying. They li even listen to some of the messages. Because they ain't getting the damn thing out there. There's nothing out there. A bunch of weak, fledgling, uh, those individuals, uh, they don't have a damn thing. They don't deal with the sins of this wicked nation. Talking about Illuminatis and all that stupidity. Uh, and they work for the Illuminatis. They, 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 they honor the God of the Illuminati. And when, when Master Yosei crunch time, they write back at it. When Master Yosei crunch, baby, they're crunching. And not any of you faggots can outwork me when it comes to work. And that's a fact, mama. They cannot work me. They don't have the resilience. They don't have the strength. They don't have the nurturing. They don't have the nature. And they certainly don't have my tenacity. And physical power, they don't even touch that. They don't even have that. And they're younger than me. So we don't mess with nobody. You all that hear me, we don't mess with nobody. Once they segregate from us, we leave them alone. We do all we can to help them. And as far as widows, we really haven't had any true widows here that was widows. They were lustful and thinking about their own damn flesh. They wanted a man. They became wanton. And when the widow becomes wanton, she will seek someone to marry. They, they want to have sex. You understand? And some of them so stinking. Who wants to marry that? Who wants that? Ya barak Yisrael. Let us stand to our feet. I'm not ashamed. And I'm not afraid to talk either. I'm a warrior. And all things are about, we debarak you in your sure's name for this day, this yom. For your kindness toward us, we want to pray for our ach, lest us strengthen, heal. Our ach, Yaqub, strengthen. And all of the achot, uh, achot and uh, our ima Maryam, they are in Miriam, they are in the, Maryland and also Mariana in Indiana. 
We pray for the hosts of Yisra'ya. Touch us all. Grant unto them strength today. And keep them from the wicked nature, the spirit of this evening as they become drunken and celebrating their vile things. Heal Yisra'ya. We pray for our enemies, Ya. Hallelujah. And Shaul said, when I come among you, one that acts like that, we want to expose him. He said, I gave one over unto Hashatan. Turn him over to the devil for the destruction of his flesh. Y'all keep your eyes on us. We're not going to try to defend us, but defend us in your shoe. We barak you for all things this day. Watch over us and keep us all in your name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all barak.